I'm so excited uh, to chat with you. I've seen a number of films and, and stage shows that you've been a part of. And I love that you wrote the music and lyrics for DreamWorks original, The Prince of Egypt, but there's a huge family animated hit for our, for our households. Um, so to see it then, you know, come full circle and have the, you know, production be on the West End and then that being captured and brought to audiences through um, into their homes, through this medium and, and the theaters. Talk to me a little bit about just what it means. So exciting to me, this, this sort of new form really, um, with the new technology of being able to film a live stage show because if you think of it um you know i can think of so many legendary performances from the theater that i've heard about and never got to see and so the fact that now you know a, cameras can come in and actually film the the experience of the stage show is, is so exciting to me and what i love about first of all i think they did a beautiful job i think it looks great i think it sounds amazing and but um you know i think it both ca captures the feeling of being in the audience and you see the big amazing stage pictures um and and the sound is very good but also then the camera moves around and it's like you could run up on stage and be right next to one of the actors you know when the, with the close-ups or the camera angles as if you like climbed up you know into the flies and are looking down at the stage so so the addition of that i think just makes it makes it so cool as an experience i agree with you more you know i've, I've had the privilege of seeing wicked on stage i've seen hamilton on stage but then to be able to see it um, and, and through fresh eyes in a different perspective when, you know, they're brought to um, the screen in this way. It doesn't, it, it anyway makes me more curious and want to see it more as if I was at a live sporting event versus watching the sporting event on TV. Exactly. I mean, obviously being in a the, the live experience of, of theater and particularly musical theater, you can't really match that thrill because of the audience around you and the sound and everybody applauding. And it, it's just that, that whole group experience to me is the, the most thrilling thing, um, you know, and, and you're just not gonna match that completely in, in a film capture. But as I say, then, then other things come into it because you have perspectives and close-ups and, you know, you can hear everything very well. And it's just, you know, so there are, there are some things that you get from this that you don't get from the live experience. And I always feel like what whatever I'm watching, so much of the success, especially emotionally of a picture or a show is the music, is the lyrics, is what carries me from scene to scene. You know, and so much of that, you know, it has been in your hands. When, when you believe, you know, went on to become a huge success for Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston and won an Oscar with those original lyrics. And then even like Defying Gravity or Popular. I mean, I can remember where I was when I heard these and you of course had, you know, powerhouse vocals of Kristen and Adina. Talk to me about how, what does your process look like? How do you continue to just deliver time and time again? Thank you for saying that. I mean, you know, I'm with my collaborators using music um, and, and lyrics just to try and tell the story and illuminate the character. And, you know, I try to kind of become the character, see through his or her eyes and feel what they're feeling. And then what does that sound like? What If you interpreted that as music, what would that be? And, you know, I kind of sit at the keyboard or occasionally with a guitar and like, how how does that translate into music and um yeah so i mean that remains the the prime I mean, it's what i've loved to do all my life you know i've been i've been lucky that this thing that i love to do as a you know as a kid uh, I, I i i'm allowed to do you know and i get paid for it so you know it doesn't get better than that you definitely have a gift and i i love that at the core of the prince of egypt when you strip everything back, it's about family. It's about these two brothers. It's about all of that. Um, and so then I love that this is an opportunity where you got to work with your son, which, you know, I, as a parent, any opportunity I get to be around my kids, I just swell with pride. So I can't imagine for you to finally have, you know, some of your work life crossover. What kind of what does that look like for you? What are these dinner conversations like? 
you know, Scott is one of my favorite directors. He's a great director. He was well established as a director of, of other people's work and creating new um, plays and musicals with other people before. First, he did um, Hunchback of Notre Dame um, you know, quite brilliantly. And therefore, um, he was, a, you know, DreamWorks top choice when they wanted to do um, Prince of Egypt. I mean, obviously, we have very similar sensibilities as members of the same family, but also we have quite different um, skill sets and we come from different generations, obviously in a different point of view. And so that combination, I think, um, strengthens, strengthens the work. We don't always agree about everything as you, you never would, but it's, you know, it's a very good working relationship, but it's definitely a professional relationship. He's definitely the director and I'm definitely the writer and you know, there's no, uh, that's how it is when, when we're working in the room. I love that you're able to to work together and still have very clear boundaries is probably what makes it so successful in, in the yeah. end too. Uh, you know, one of the things that I always find with biblical stories is that they hit you right where you're at, regardless of the time, the era, what else is going on in the world. However, it's not lost on me that I feel like it's perfectly placed that we would get this film at a time that we're experiencing as a country and as and as the world. Talk to me a little bit about that. I wish the story seemed dated. I wish you could go and say like, oh, well, thank goodness that doesn't happen anymore. Thank mm -hmm. goodness there aren't these tribes who, you know, hate each other and try to kill each other and refuse to understand where the other is coming from. And, you know, it's happening right in the same part of the world. It's it, in some ways, it's extremely discouraging that, um, you know, this violence and tribalism and hatred continues now. And, you know, Prince of Egypt, of course, is all about trying to see the other's point of view and to try and solve legitimate problems through love and compassion and understanding instead of you know, we'll just kill everybody who doesn't agree with us. Um, and it's disappointing that we still have to write stories about that. You know, you've, you've gotten to do so much um, at such a high level. Is there something in the back of your head or, or that continues to nag at you that you're like, man, I would love an opportunity to do this, or I would love to be able to create music and lyrics around this. What is, what is, what do the next steps even look like for you? What do you dream about? You know, I continue to be given the opportunity to tell stories um, that I'm interested in with characters that I respond to and themes that I want to explore. And that's, you know, that's through the, through the medium of music and, and theater and storytelling, whether it is a live show or for film or through dance, uh, you know, I mean, this is what I've always wanted to do. And, uh, you know, I'm quite a bit older than when I started and they're still letting me do it, Kelly. So what can I tell you? They haven't stopped me yet. I'm glad the strike ended. I'm glad that we can move forward. And, you know, there's also this little thing coming out next year, still slated for next year, Wicked. Uh, yeah, what yeah. what can mean, you tell us about that? Part yeah. one, anyway? I mean, it's, you know, it's obviously in the process of being edited. There's a little bit of shooting left to do that, um, you know, had to be stopped when the actor strike happened. So, um, you know, they'll do some pickups stuff. And then there's a lot of recording and mixing and orchestra playing and stuff to do, um, you know, but, but yeah, I mean, presumably we are on track for that around this time next year, there should be movie number one out there in the world. I love it. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, I lo have loved everything that you've touched so far. So I just can't wait for you to continue uh, making art. And thank you for the time today. Thank you. It was great to speak with you. We all have a story.